Hello and welcome to the Microsoft Teams um, training. If you are here as part of the Dig In With Tech PD course, congratulations. This is the first video that you are supposed to be watching and so you have gotten here correctly and you're in the right place. Um, everyone else is welcome as well. This is just gonna be a brief about half hour overview of how to use Microsoft Teams in an educational setting. So this is the first thing that you see. What you have here are all the teams that you're a part of. When you first start on Teams, you may not have anything in there yet. And so the first thing that I'm gonna show you how to do is how to join or create a team. And that's this button right up here on the top right. So when I click on that, um, I have some options for my organization that I can add right away and if you see anything when you go into your teams to add a team that looks like it would be a good fit for you, you absolutely can join those. You will notice that all of these are set up as public teams. That's why they are visible to me as part of my organization. So because I'm logged in with an at k12.wv.us um, email address, I can see teams that are part of that domain that are public. If I have a code, um, I can enter my code here. So if you haven't yet joined our um, Dig Into Tech team, um, you'll have a code for that. And so when you get to your teams, you can enter that code and join our team that way. Um, that's one of the best ways I think to share with students is to give them that code. Um, or before that though, you need to have a team. So create a team is probably one of the first things that you're gonna wanna do. You have four options in here, class, PLC, staff, or other. Um, you're probably gonna wanna create a class for your class. That's the one that will allow you to give assignments and have a grading portal. Um, it also is the one that has the least flexibility to allow students to edit parts of the, um, parts of the course, to invite other people, things like that. It really keeps the student accounts locked down so they can't change a lot of different things. If you have a group of educators at your school who think would benefit from a PLC, I'll show you what those look like later on. And then this other option is good for more informal groups. Um, and so having a mix of different types of uh, Microsoft Teams is not a bad idea depending on what the goal of those different teams are. Okay, we're just gonna create a demo class so I can show you what it looks like. So I'm just gonna call it demo class. Trying things out. You can also, once you've made one class and have it set up the way that you want, you can use that team as a template. So if you teach um, four different sections of a course, you can create that course one time, preload it with maybe some basic information, and then create that, create that use that as a template to create your other sections of that course so you're not having to duplicate a bunch of work. Okay. At this point, I can choose students and teachers to add to the course. Adding teachers is really nice if you collaborate with anyone or if you're on a grade level team, they can get in there and also be administrators within your course and interact with um, the course the same way that you do. Students, as I said before, have a much more limited role. So you can search for students within your at k12.wv.edu, or sorry, .us email address and um, be able to add students in. Um, if you would rather put your students in instead of giving them a code. By doing it this way, you're gonna have to enter a bunch of email addresses by hand, but that may be more convenient for your students and a better choice. For now, I'm gonna skip that step. Okay, so now we're in here and I wanna talk a little bit about these um, buttons down the side here. This first one, chat, is fantastic. It is not tied to one specific team. It's everyone in your organization. Um, and so you can chat with individuals, you can chat with a whole class, um, you can chat with a small group of students. So if you have a group of students that are working on a project and they're wanting feedback from you, um, they or you can create a small group that has the people in that group and the um, instructor for the course and you can be exchanging information that way. It's a really flexible, good way to communicate. You'll notice that down here, you have the option to attach files um, and other fun things like that. So this is a really good way to share information with um, groups, not at the team level, but just more um, small groups or individually. Um, you can enter in uh, emails or names one at a time, or you can use a group to add um, that whole group there. 
activity is really simple. It's just if anyone messages you or if um, they reply to something or if they react, once you send a message, um, you can choose a little emoji to react to it. And so you'll get notifications and activity when that happens. Teams we saw already, um, if you go back here to all teams, you can see the different um, courses that you have or the different teams that you're a part of. When you go down to assignments, you can um, choose which classes to add assignments to. So right now, Dig In With Tech is the one that I have selected. And I'm going to go ahead and say next. And I can create assignments from this on the sidebar here because I have a uh, set up a classroom um, type of account. The calendar is a way to show when you are and are not available. You can schedule meetings with specific people. So required attendees, you could add your class to there. Um, you can also add optional attendees for certain times. You can set it to repeat or not repeat, and that's pretty flexible. Um, and then uh, you can also have it show up on your calendar that you're unavailable during those times. So people won't be interrupting you with um, video calls during that time. If you're in a meeting, uh, Teams won't allow that to happen. And you can tell whether you're available or not because under your little icon or picture up here in the top, that green check mark means you're available. If it's a red X, it means that you are not available because you have a meeting scheduled on here in Teams. Um, this is something that you can use to communicate when your office hours are, when class meetings are, those kind of things. You can do video or, um, or just audio calls. You can have these be individual calls or group calls. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility there and you also have a voicemail box in Teams. Files is just anything that you have uploaded. Um, OneDrive, you also have accounts through there. Um, so if you have your OneDrive set up, you can use files from there to attach really easily. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to within, oh, actually, I'm going to show you the settings now because that's one more thing I wanted to show you before we get into Teams. So up here where you have your initials or your face, maybe if you have a picture set up, you can set whether you're busy or, um, or away. You can set a status message. And the thing I wanted to show you the most is right here is settings. So if I click on settings, you can change your layout. So this can be really useful for students who have maybe some sort of a visual impairment. If you switch to high contrast, it's gonna be easier for them to navigate and tell what's what. Uh, most of us, I would guess, find that a little bit jarring. Um, but I know a lot of students do prefer dark mode which is like a lesser, not as high contrast version of that, um, but also is a little bit lighter on the eyes if you're looking at screens all day. So that's one thing you can change in settings. You can also change your layout. Uh, you can set the language of the app. For privacy, you can manage your do not disturb. Um, leaving red receipts on is a good way to let people know if you've seen something without necessarily responding. Uh, notifications, you can um, decide in what way it notifies you when you get new um, posts to a chat, when you get new questions that students are asking you, those kind of things. And calls, this is where you can set up your voicemail. Okay, so if you do want to use um, Teams for your, uh, for the voice chat ability, um, configuring your voicemail so that students can leave you messages is one way that you can um, be more accessible and get in control or get in contact with them. So you can record a greeting, uh, excuse me, you can let the caller do what, whatever they're going to do. You can put in text here if you don't want to be the one saying your greeting and you can also set an out of office. So that's all found under the settings menu that's just at your name. Okay, so let's go into our class. Digging with Tech is going to be our class, and so let's look at some things in there. I haven't done a lot in here, but there's a lot that you can do. Um, one of the things you'll notice here is that when you have um, not put anything in yet, this Find Help and Training menu here is really useful. Okay, so if you click on here, there are lots of different team trainings that you can attend. 
um, and read about various information, okay? So this is a great place to start. If there's something in particular that you're looking for and you're not sure how to do it, searching help is um, definitely something that would be good to do. And you'll notice that this help tab has appeared down here. If I navigate away, I think it goes away as well, but you can get it back by clicking on this dot, dot, dot here. Um, and then the help one is just the one with the question mark right there. So you can always find it on the dot, dot, dot on the side if you are populating your class and still have a question. So this posts here is just the general chat for the whole team, for the whole class, okay? And so things can happen there. You can um, start uh, your video lesson from here. If you are planning on doing a synchronous video class, you can host one this way. Um, you can just put information in like about deadlines or upcoming assignments. You can say, tell them, direct them to check a certain website or something like that. Anything here will go out to the whole team. Okay. And the next thing over is files. You can choose to, um, pick a particular, um, file and upload it here so that everyone can have access to it. You also have a class notebook. And in the class notebook, you can set up a OneNote um, so that students can have their own, or you can um, set up shared ones, or you can set up a whole team one, okay? Uh, if you already are using OneNote, you can definitely use your existing one, um, but we'll just start with a blank notebook and see what's going on, okay? So here it's describing there will be a collaboration space, team notes for everyone, um, teachers and students can edit, in the content library, the teacher is the only one allowed to edit the content, but everyone can see it. So this would be if you're posting um, articles or things like that, you would want them to go into the content library, not the collaboration space. And then in the student notebooks, the students and teachers can just edit their own notebook and they don't see anyone else's. So if you're wanting students to um, be taking notes on something, this is where they can take notes and have it just be for them. This could also be a reflection journal or something like that that you and the student both can see. Okay, and right now you can set up what you want in here. Our course is not going to have quizzes, so we're gonna get rid of that. Um, and I'm gonna add a section for the reflection. And so each student's notebook will be called their name and then have these four categories in there. It'll take a minute to get ready. So while it's setting that up, if we go over to assignments here, um, right now it says everything's been graded because there's nothing in there. If I wanna create an assignment, I can choose whether it's an assignment or a quiz. And then this is the window that shows up. I enter a title. Um, you can put in instructions. You'll notice that there's also um, a paperclip here, which means that you can add a whole document if you would like to. You could add an image, whatever it, it may be. But if you have more than just what you want to type into that box, you can copy that to all of the students there. Um, you have how many points it's worth. You can include a rubric if you would like. You can assign it to whichever classes you have. So I only have the one set up right now to be able to do assignments. So if you wanted to copy this to multiple sections of the same course, you absolutely could. I'm assigning it to all students, not just particular ones. And then right now it has a due date of June 2nd at just before midnight. Assignment will post immediately with late turn-ins allowed. You'll notice there's an edit after this. If you click on here, you can decide, okay, I want to set up all my assignments for the next month now, but I don't want students to be able to see them. You can click, click this box and have things be scheduled so they show up, let's say, Monday morning and close on Friday uh, evening. Okay, if you leave it as a due date, late turn-ins will be allowed. If you don't want students to be able to turn it in after the deadline, you can set this to close date, and that means the assignment will not accept anything else after that date that is posted. Okay, so it's a decision that you can make ahead of time that then will save you a little bit of work down the line depending on what you want to do. Okay, 
And then here it says post assignment notifications to this channel general. And general is the only channel we have set up right now. So that's, um, that's what we want to do. And then I click assign. It goes out to the course. Okay. It's under an upcoming assignment. Um, and there's nothing to grade yet because no one's turned anything in. That notification that just popped up is that there's a new assignment. You'll see it shows up in my Teams and it shows up in Activity. And if I click on it in Activity, um, I can go right to the assignment description and see what's there. Okay. So, and this is my end. You would see uh, the student view up here if you want to check on what that looks like. This is all the information that I put in for that. Excuse me. So that's all that'd be there right now. Okay. The last thing I wanted to show you is this plus right here. If there are particular apps that you know you're going to be using with your students, you can add those apps in. Um, they have a lot of these down here. It is a little bit overwhelming, but if there are some things you know you're going to have students going to regularly, this can be a good way to um, get them there. Uh, I know we're going to be using Flipgrid a lot in our course, so when I search for Flipgrid, it shows up. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to say Add. Post to the channel about this tab. That sounds good. I need to create an account for it, so I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I'll put in my old one, though. Okay. And then that will allow students to click on um, Geosphere. That's the name of the Flipgrid channel. I'm going to rename it because that's a little bit confusing. I wouldn't want the flip code to be the thing that's up there, so I'm going to rename it to Flipgrid. And then students can just click on it from there to be able to log in and access the Flipgrid site. Okay. Um, teams can be accessed from a browser, which is how I'm doing it now, or from an application that you download to your computer. It's for Windows or for Mac. Um, they're very similar and they both can be set up to send you notifications when new information comes through. So there's not really a substantial difference between the two, but it is a good thing to decide whether you want it to be an application or whether you want to just access it through your browser. That's a personal preference kind of thing. The last thing that I want to talk about um, before we are done with this video and you have a chance to get into Teams and play with it a little bit yourself is I want you to go to the main menu and I want to show you about channels. And to do that, I'm going to click on these three little dots here on our class and I'm going to go to add channel. Okay, so this is a way that you can create a subgroup within your class. Um, so it could be for a small group project, it could be um, for something else where you just want students in breakout rooms, that kind of thing. So you would give your channel the name um, and then you would uh, change it to private accessible to only a specific group of people if you wanted it to be a closed small group like for a group project. You also can put in channels for different things that you're working on. Um, so if you have um, an upper elementary school class and you want a separate channel for math, for science, for reading, that would absolutely make sense and then it keeps your instruction and you're posting focus to that particular content area. It is entirely how, up to you how you want to set up channels, but it's a really powerful feature that will allow um, your, your class to stay more focused and make it easier for people to access the information that they need. Um, it can get a little hairy to manage a channel if people are not being careful about what gets posted where, if everyone has access to the channel, but if it's a small group, they only have access to their small group's channel. And so it shouldn't be an issue of people posting the wrong thing um, in the wrong place. So creating channels can really help organize those kind of digital group projects. And honestly, it's nice to have just a small group be able to um, conference with each other, uh, have those discussion questions that you would normally have in class, those kind of things, if you're using Teams as a substitute for face-to-face -face instruction. There is a ton more that you can access um, through Teams. The help button I'm realizing is down here now too. Topics, training, what's new, suggest a feature. 
This is all really good stuff, but this is the basic overview of how to get something set up. Throughout the course of our Dig In With Tech um, class, you'll be able to have a chance to experience the student side of it and decide whether it's something that you think would be a good fit for your students. So please come in, um, say hello, welcome yourself, and um, I'm excited to get started.